So now we've got a edited simple MIDI path that just goes around the pattern on the electric 88. And we've worked with it in the MIDI editor just to adjust some of the parts to correct things and we fixed a pedal and so on. Okay, so given that we've got that, let's just say that we want to loop this, which is a common thing that we want to do with, you know, repetitive chord patterns and uh, it would be the case in this song. If I right click on this MIDI clip now in the edit window, you'll see there's an option called loop. So if I click on that, I get to specify the number of loops. I'll just loop it eight times. And now that I've looped it eight times, it will actually create, as promised, a loop of that pattern. Okay, so we don't need to keep re-performing it if we don't want to. The next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to add <clears throat> a simple kick and snare part alongside this. So we're going to just use one of the standard Pro Tools instruments for this just to make it easy because it's something uh, that will just come installed with Pro Tools. So if I go new track and then I create a stereo instrument track. So just like we did for the electric piano for the Rhodes part. And I'm just going to call it drum, maybe just drum one. That's created a new instrument track. And on this one, in the instruments, we're just going to put on structure free, which is just a really simple MIDI instrument in the Pro Tools standard suite. On this first channel here, we're just going to click on that pop down menu to see the presets and we're just going to find something called 90s electronic kit it's looking at all input so if i just record enable the track now i can now play on my keyboard okay so i'm now playing the input of this classic 90s electronic drum machine beatbox sound Okay, so let's go and record a simple pattern into it. And I'll just uh, zoom in. So the drums actually come in. I've already put a marker here at bar 17. So in grid mode, that's just going to be my drop-in point. And uh, I've got my transport window popped out here. So remember how we pop out our transport window. Transport. And then if we have count off selected here, it will give me a two bar count in before I drop into record. So let me just try recording a bit of a drum pattern, just a, a kick and snare pattern I'm going to worry about at the moment. I'll add hi-hat later. So I just hit the space bar to drop myself out of record. That will now have created a basic drum part. Okay, so you might have noticed there, I just noticed it then, that it missed my first kick. That's because the behavior when you're recording MIDI is that it records the event, the note on. I must have just come in a bit early on that kick, so it wouldn't have captured that. So I'm just gonna double click here. Okay, I'm gonna put another one in, so. There it is. I haven't quantized it yet. I played it reasonably in time, what a shock. I can hear a few loose ones there anyway. Let's just zoom in a little bit and just have a look at the accuracy of my playing. You'll see these things just a little bit early and so on. You can do this whole deal of just using the smart tool and then trimming things up. So you can manually, if I'm in grid mode, which I am, it'll snap. So just snaps to put it in time. 
but a better way is obviously to quantize these beats. To do that, I need to zoom out and then I'm just going to select them all. You can partly select or you can select all. I'm just going to select all. And so if I go to event menu and I go to event operations and I go quantize, this gives me my quantize menu. So it allows me to quantize the selected MIDI events. Okay, and I can choose node on, node off, whatever. The node on is all I'm worried about at the moment because it's just triggering a drum sample. Then you choose the how fine the grid is that you're quantizing to, maybe 16th note, and then go apply. See how it shifted those notes ever so slightly. So that's now brought all of the notes into the grid. If I was to zoom in, you can see everything's just on the grid now. So it's always good to check your quantize just in case it puts something on the wrong part of the grid. Okay, it's all good to me. All right, so we can do the same thing now with this drum pattern. We can go through and just right click it and go loop. And I'll loop that eight times. So now I've put it into loop mode. I can actually just extend the loop like a clip to where it needs to go. We've now got this kick and snare pattern here on the drum part. So I want to put in a hi-hat pattern now. So there's a couple of ways that I could do this. Uh, I can just go in on top of the clip that I've already recorded and overdub the MIDI onto it. So uh, I want to put a hi-hat on, which is, okay, it's on the F sharp. On the transport bar, you'll see this button here and it says MIDI merge. If you've got that turned on, then when you record, on an existing part, it won't erase what's there, it will just add over the top. So let's give that a go, and we're just gonna go in at the same point at 1701. Got a two bar count off, so let's just go in and record. Okay, what it's done, which is kind of interesting, is it's done this hi-hat pattern for the whole loop. Pro Tools knows that this thing is a loop, and so you only need to play into the first part of the loop and it will repeat it out for the whole, um, the whole pattern. So let's just go and listen to the hi-hat. There it is. Have a look at it in the MIDI editor. Okay, I'm going to quantize this again, but because I've already quantized my kick and snare, I can just go in here, I've got the smart tool on, and I can just click and drag across all these hi-hats. Okay, and they go from here to eternity because we're looped. I'll just go to event operations again, go to quantize, 16th note, again, just have the note on, and then just go quantize and let's just see how that goes I think it's pretty good I did play a few extra hats or wrong hats somewhere I can deal with those if I hear them yeah I let you let that one go so if I double click it see with the smart tool it goes to a finger pointer when I'm right on a note and if I double click that it will erase it that hat just lets that snare go in there. Hat, see, but I played it there by a mistake. Okay. I did it here again.
and I do need to take those additional hi-hats out the whole way or I could just trim back the loop to the first eight bars and then loop it again. Depends on how much it bothers me doing this, what I'm doing now, taking those extra hats out. get the vibe I could go on and on but it, you're not seeing anything new here but you get the concept right you can just use MIDI merge and provided you're in MIDI merge it won't erase what's there and then you saw me just select the hi-hats only because they're on a discrete note there's F sharp and I just dragged across those and I was able to quantize those separately from the rest of the tracks so now we have a basic MIDI part recorded just with kick snare and hats that's working well let me go back into the MIDI editor and you'll see underneath here the uh, velocity. Velocity is basically the dynamics. A velocity message is a MIDI message which indicates how hard you struck the note. So you'll see the velocities, these are all, if we go in a little bit more closely on these, you'll see each one of these notes is a different velocity because I hit it at a different level of accent. So if I want to put accents into things here, I can play around with these, turning the event up and down until I get it right. This drum part has some quite subtle accenting going on. It would probably pay me just to strip it back to that first eight bars and just really work on the accenting and then re-loop the whole thing. That would involve me doing something like this instead of looping the whole thing. Go back to here and just bring it back down to its original length, which was four bars. Right? I just saw I missed the uh, first I hat, so let's fix that. So let me just work on four bars and then get the accents right and then I'll loop it back out again. So let's just, that's the kick. So if I go over these hi-hats, if I wanted to put some accents into the hi-hats, if I select them through the timeline, you see how they're selected in white here? So I can see where they are. Let's have a look at it. So. That da 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 at the end should be accented down. So this is da da da. Okay, so that's two light ones and one strong one. And then this one at the end kind of accents down. Da, da, da. So we can cut here and I'll um, bring it back after I've worked on these accents. Okay, so I've played around with the sort of finer detail of adjusting these velocities for each beat. It just has a little bit more swing in it now, although because it's a drum machine, if it was a real drum kit, it would swing a little bit more. I just sort of worked on the accents on that one repetition and used the trimmer tool to trim it out for the duration. All right, so that's a repetitive drum part that I've just programmed in. I played that in off a keyboard, but you could do the same kind of programming by just being in the MIDI edit mode and then just finding your instrument. You can find your drums on the left hand side. So I just add an open hat here along here. And just, you know, repeat that open hat pattern along through there. And 
and so on. So, I mean, I can be entering MIDI events by just clicking into this MIDI grid. And obviously I can hear my drums on the left-hand side. And then I can use MIDI Merge if I'm playing on a controller to add to this. Okay, and then with Smart Tool, you can lengthen things, uh, move it around. If you want to get rid of it, double click it. Okay, so that's enough for this session. It's just basically adding a drum part.